Hello class, this is your teacher Ms. Arco and today we're going to start covering the basics of SQL. Now last week we began our study on access and we explored how to make tables and how to input data into those tables. Today we learn how to take data out but not in some haphazard way. The power of SQL is the power of a filter. And once again, I want to remind you about how we compared access to a telephone book. A telephone book is also a database, but it's a database that is not computer-based. We use telephone books instead of random stacks of paper because the telephone book is alphabetized. It has a filter that helps us find the person or business that we need at that moment in a very short period of time and with only a minimal amount of effort. Access works the same way and SQL is its filter. Let's take a look at the objectives as we begin our course. Um, as we go through this packet where we will learn exactly what a query is and what it consists of, we will learn the main parts of an SQL program. Select, from, where, and order by. We will define and learn when to use the command word select from and where, and we will finally learn about miscellaneous rules and programming terms such as the asterisk, when to use distinct and what happens when you do so, and other grammar rules. What is a query? A query is a question presented to access in order to retrieve specific information from one or multiple tables. This is accomplished with the SELECT statement. This statement acts like a filter and shows us only the information that we want to see. There are four main parts to the SQL program. SELECT, FROM, WHERE, and ORDER BY. Now I want you to take a good hard look at this slide. Notice the order of select from where and order by. When it is your turn to program, you must follow this particular order. Select goes first, from is second, where is third, and order by is fourth. Select and from are mandatory. If your statement is missing one of these command words, your program will not run. Instead, you're going to get an error message. Where is optional but you will almost always use where. In fact, I'd say you will use where over 90% of the time. Order by appears at the very bottom, but we're really not going to touch that in this class. Access has a very convenient button that automatically sorts numbers and words. It is so convenient that we're going to use that instead of programming it into access. How do you construct an actual SQL program. You start with the keyword select and after you type select you follow it with a series of columns from tables that you want to see displayed in your results. After you create your select statement next comes the from. The from keyword is followed by the names of the tables that the columns can be found in. And I give you an example um, below of a very short program. And in fact, we are going to program it right now. I'm going to open up my access database, okay, and I'm going to open the books table that you and I created together last week and we're going to take a look at it. Oops, I think it was the customers table. Let me go ahead and open that. Okay. This is the customers table that you and I created last week. Notice the names of the columns. I have customer ID, I have last name, I have first name, and then I have address, state, zip, foreign key, and customer ID. Now, in my program, I want to grab the last and first names of my customers, and I want to filter everything else out. So let's go ahead and create a query so we can make this possible. I'm up here in the ribbon area. I'm going to click on Create. 
all right? And from here, I'm going to go to Query Design. I'll click there. And then this graphical user interface comes up. I'm going to close this for now. We'll talk about the graphical user interface later. For now, I really want to program. So, up here, when I opened up my query, a queries tool tab popped up, and under it is, a, is another tab that says design. On the left of the ribbon, there is an SQL view, and when I click on that, I get my select command, and I'm ready to start programming. Now, to make your life easier, Access automatically adds this semicolon. We end all of our programs with that semicolon. I'm going to take it away for now because it's just going to muck up my programming. And if you will look at your packet, what follows the select statement? The names of the columns that you want to see displayed in your results. If I come to my customer table, I want to see the last names and first names of my customers. So after select, I will type last underscore name. And then I'm going to put a comma. The comma tells SQL that there is another column coming. And then I will put first underscore name. Why did I spell last and first name this way? Because that's exactly how it is spelled here on your table. However you spelled your columns on your table, that is the same spelling that you must use in your program. <coughs> or else the machine is not going to be able to understand what it's trying to pull. After we're done typing the select statement, I'm going to hit enter. And I'm going to put my from statement. After from, I tell the machine where I am getting my last name and first name from. I'm getting it from the customer's table. And after I'm done typing, I go ahead and I put a semicolon. And now I'm ready to run my program. I'm going to go back to my Query Tools tab. I'm going to click on Design. And over here on the left, there is a button that says Run. When I click the Run button, my program has been executed, and I now have the last and first names of all of my clientele. And all the other information, their address, the state where they live, their customer ID number, that has all been filtered out. Pretty cool, huh? Let's go back to our PowerPoint slideshow. And at the bottom, I leave you a little note. Important, notice that when you are done programming your argument, you need to end your argument with a semicolon. Let's talk a little bit more about the from clause. The from clause must always be used with the select statement. And the purpose of the from clause is to tell the query which table or tables to go to in order to find the columns from the select statement. You can put more than one table in the from statement. And by the time we're done with our SQL class, you'll be pulling information from two or three tables. When you get to that level, you will separate your tables with a comma, just like you separated multiple columns in the select statements with a comma. The WHERE clause. The WHERE clause is SQL's filter. It removes information that you do not want to see by using logical arguments. Now, we went over these logical arguments not too long ago in Excel. If, if you can think back that far, we have the greater than sign, we have the less than sign, equal to, less than or equal to, greater than or equal to, and then this funny sign where it looks like two mouths are eating each other, that is the does not equal sign. 
The formula for the WHERE clause is the following. You'll have the keyword WHERE. Following the WHERE, you'll have the name of the column whose information you are evaluating. And then after the name of the column, you will have the logical argument or some other evaluation to round off that statement. Now, I know that sounds a little Greek, um, but I give you an example here to take a look at. You may have a group of filters in the WHERE statement, and if you do, you will put them together with AND or OR. Now, we, we practiced using AND and OR when we were studying Excel, and the rules that apply to Excel also apply in SQL. Let's take a look at the example that I showed you here. Select product name, the name of a column, and the cost, another name of a column, from the products table where the cost is greater than five bucks or the cost equals zero. Let's talk a little bit about some miscellaneous um, programming techniques. The asterisks in SQL can either stand for multiply or it can stand for the shortcut choose everything. And I give you the example select asterisks from customers. Let's go ahead and ooh, that sort of that went wild. Let's go ahead and put that into our access database. I'm going to create a new query. So I'll come up to the Create uh, tab, and then I'm going to go straight to that Query Designer. The graphical user interface will pop up. We'll, we'll, we'll turn that off. And um, under the Design tab, I'm going to go to the SQL view, and this will give me the opportunity to, stop to start typing. I'm going to get rid of that semicolon. It's just going to muck up my programming for right now. And after select, I'm going to put a space, and then I'm going to put the asterisk. Okay. I'll drop down, and I'll put the from statement. And after from, I will put, I'll say to select everything from the customer's table. Okay. I'll close off my argument. Oops, not with that, semicolon. And then I'll hit run. And my everything in the customer's table has been reproduced in my query. Now we just got done talking about the where and how it acts like a really powerful filter. Let's say from this query, I want to see everything. I want to see all the columns, the customer ID, last name, first name, address, state, zip, foreign key, and customer ID. I want to see all of that information, but only for the people who live in Texas. This is where the WHERE statement kicks in. I'm going to change my view, and I'm going to go back to my SQL view. I'm going to get rid of that semicolon because I'm not done programming. And after my from, I'm going to drop down. And I'm going to add a where so that I have an additional filter. And I will select all the columns from the customers table for those people who live in Texas. Now, let's take a look at the customers table. The Texas uh, information, the information of where my customers, which state they live in, is in a column called state. Okay? So I'll come back to my query. I'll put where. And then I'll put the name of the column that I want to filter. State. Where state equals and then I'm going to put this in quotes. We're going to talk about this later. Texas. 
I'm done with my program, I go ahead and I close it. And then I'll go back to the Design tab and I'll hit Run. And you can see that the columns from the uh, customer table, all of them have been transferred over into my query. But because of the where statement, the only information I see is for the people who live in Texas. Let's go back to our PowerPoint. All right. And now we have this in-depth look at the asterisks and at the concept of choose everything. Now, the next statement, if you, if you can read it, if you are selecting words from tables in the WHERE clause, you must place the words in single quotes. And then I, there's my Texas program. Oops. There's my Texas program here at the bottom. Select first name, last name from customers where state equals Texas. That's kind of getting cut off down there. All right, but you will notice that, and let me pull up that database again, okay, and let me go to the SQL view. You will notice that Texas is in single quotes. Every time you are pulling information from a column, and that information is words, you must put it in single quotes, and you need to spell it exactly as it is spelled in the table. If it is instead numbers, then you do not use quotes. Okay? In SQL, the word distinct means computer do not show any duplicates. And I give you an example. Select distinct. With the distinct command goes into the select portion of your programming. And then in parentheses, we put the name of the column that we want duplicates taken out of. So based on this program that you see here, if Robert is in your database twice, and he is, Robert will only appear once. The distinct gets rid of any duplicates. Finally, words and quotes are case sensitive. Look at the three ways that I spelled Hamlet. Okay? The red Hamlet, the blue Hamlet, and the purple Hamlet each have a different, um, each have a different, uh, capitalizations, right? One is sentence case, one is all caps, and one is lower case. They do not mean the same thing. You must be exact when you are using single quotes. Let's review. A query is a question presented to access in order to find filtered information. The select statement is the main filter, and it consists of four parts. Select, from, where, and order by. Each command word has its own set of grammar and rules and performs different unique jobs. Finally, we learned miscellaneous commands such as the asterisk and distinct along with other grammar rules. So that is it for our introduction. In the next module, we will get into the nuts and bolts of the where statement.